Hey, what's going on, Kingdom My Family? It's your pastor, Pastor Fred Parker Jr. And man, I'm so glad you have tuned in and come to church on this beautiful Wednesday night. Man, isn't God good in the midst of all of this crazy corona? Uh, we know that Christ is still on the throne. We know that God is still sovereign. And I'm just grateful. I want to thank God for you. I want you to know I've been praying for you and I'm praying with you. And I'm glad that you've tuned in. I got good news for God's people in the midst of all the bad news. Uh, I have some good news for you tonight. I'm excited about God and what he's doing, just how amazing he is. Uh, thank you for, for lo logging into our virtual campus. Y'all showed us some crazy love on Sunday. Man, it was just absolutely amazing. I hope you enjoyed that word. If you missed Sunday, man, I'm telling you, you need to log on, go back to the previous video, click on that, and make sure you comment uh, because, man, we're so excited to have you. Uh, if you're just tuning on right now, God bless you. Look, comment right now. Tell everybody I'm here. Tell everybody what's up. Uh, as I'm talking today, holler back at me, man. I, I miss seeing you and touching you in person. Uh, but, man, uh, every time I see those comments, I know I know it's blessing you and touching you. And so, uh, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Welcome to Kingdom Life. I promise you, by the grace of God, uh, you're going to leave better. And God has uh, just a great word for you uh, today. Uh, no matter what's going on, know that God is in control. We've been kicking it about this, uh, this, this new series entitled Stay in the House. We've been rolling with our pastor, Dr. R.A. Burning, and my Shepherds Connection brothers and sisters in this new nationwide series. And man, we are all rolling at the same pace, uh, hitting this message all together, all across the nation. And man, it's going absolutely crazy. So I thank God for our pastor and his lead. And I'm grateful for all of you, uh, Kingdom Life family, for, for tuning in, logging in, and hanging out with us. Uh, look, let's just get right to the text. Uh, it's going to bless you good. Uh, it's going to bless you real good. I'm telling you right now, let's jump in. Let's dive in. Uh, I want this word to bless you tonight. Hey, we got the scriptures on the screen that's going to help you. But if you haven't downloaded our app, do it. It's a great time to do it, man. And, and make sure you stay connected with us. Be the first to know, not the last to know. Like our page. Turn on your notifications. And make sure that everything that, that pops up with Kingdom Life, that you it get it, it comes right to your phone, all right? Let's dive into this text. It's going to bless you good. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Uh, the text says, let's get into Exodus, the, the 12th chapter. I got it right here. Uh, it's on your screen. It's going to help you. The Message Bible says it like this. He says, I will go through the land of Egypt. On this night, I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, whether human or animal, and bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am God. Yeah. We're kicking it with this series entitled Stay in the House. Sunday, if you missed it again, catch, go ahead and go ahead and watch the replay. Uh, but here it is. God uh, has been uh, patient. Uh, God has decided now that he's about to rescue his people. And God has already told Moses, he says, I'm about to come through. Uh, I'm coming through Egypt. Uh, and Egypt has been at a point, if you caught us on Sunday, uh, make sure you catch it. Listen, they, they were at a point where they had reached that point of no return. Yeah, they had... They had turned away from God, had become a, a immoral, a greedy, covetous people. Uh, they wanted to live life their own way. They worshiped gods that, 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 that led to the, the lives that they wanted to lead. Uh, they, had, they wanted nothing to do with the righteousness that God demanded. Uh, and so they had reached that point of no return. And God says, uh, I'm coming through and I'm about to execute judgment. God had a hit out on all the false gods of Egypt. And God was ready to bow. He's coming through now. He says, I'm not waiting for uh, any repenting at this point or no relenting. I, 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 it's been long enough. So here it is. God's about to come through. And God says, I'm striking down all the firstborn in the land, whether that's people and animals and, 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 and all the false gods. I'm coming through uh, because God says, uh, enough's enough. You know, I didn't get a chance to unpack this like I wanted to on Sunday. But Wednesday, we'd like to dive a little bit deeper. Um, and so I want to just touch this real quick. Wednesday, uh, today, I want to talk about this whole idea of theodicy. I mean, this idea that, that here it is, because we dealt with this idea of God coming through. But what we didn't deal with is how do you grapple with, wrestle with, and reconcile this whole ideology that here it is, God says, I'm coming through. He's going to rescue his people. But yet at the same time, he says, I'm going to kill all the firstborn. What, what tripped me out a little bit and might you is 
maybe you consider, well, what about all the innocent people? You know, what about, what about the, 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 pay, the babies that had nothing to do with this? Uh, but yet God says, I'm coming through. This idea of theodicy, right? It, it, it deals with this whole idea. I think Alvin Latinga said it well. He says, theodicy is the, the answer to the question of why God permits evil. Theodicy is defined as this, this theological construct that attempts to vindicate God in response to the evidential problem of evil that seems inconsistent with the existence of an omnipotent and omnibenevolent deity. Yeah, I like how uh, Latinga said it here. It's the answer to the question of why God permits evil. See, God says I'm coming through. Uh, God says it's been long enough. I'm, I'm here to punish the Egyptians. I'm here to punish the God, the, the false fake gods. Um, but why, why, why some of the innocent people? I can hear somebody asking right now, well, well, why did God permit Corona? I don't know, maybe it's going on on social media. Maybe, maybe some Facebook people, people are talking. People are trying to reconcile. Times like this, we try to reconcile and, and try to figure God out, try to figure out why things are happening. Uh, and it's difficult when, as human beings in our, in our humanity, where we can't wrap our minds around something, where we can't figure it out. Uh, I can hear, sense some people wondering, why did maybe did God allow Corona? Why, why did God allow this to happen? Uh, this text just uh, sense, tends to lead me to this place and I want to use kind of our existing and current climate uh, of crazy corona uh, as kind of a heuristic device to bridge between antiquity and modernity, this whole idea of well, here it is God uh, allowed this to happen way back when in Egypt, but then it seems like maybe some might be thinking God is allowing it right now. I can hear somebody saying that, um, you know, wh why does God have to allow innocent people to suffer, innocent people to die, for people to go without employment? I want to be clear that, that God didn't bring Corona. No, 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 God didn't bring it. Um, but whatever God doesn't stop, God allows. Okay, let me, let, me, let me unpack that quickly. God didn't bring Corona, but whatever God doesn't stop, he allows. Uh, you know, the, God, God, God chose not to stop Corona. Um, I don't know, maybe the reason God chose not to stop Corona is because maybe God just wanted us all to get back in the house. You know, sometimes we often talk about and look at all the stuff, uh, the stuff that, that hits us. But what we don't often think about is the stuff that, that God blocked. Yeah, that's good. Because there's so many things that could have, should have, and would have happened to you. And the only reason it didn't happen is because God blocked it. Oh, I, I, feel like, I feel like preaching a little bit right here because I started thinking about for a moment just the stuff, the dangers. Uh, it's stuff that I know about. But what about the stuff that you and I... We don't even know that was going to hit us, that God blocked us. Yeah, the, the person that was about to run a red light, we didn't even know it, and God caused him to stop. Yeah, the, the car accident that was about to happen, that God blocked. Yeah, the, the disease that was about to hit you, that God blocked. Yeah, the sickness that could have hit you and your family, that God blocked. Yeah, the financial, the financial breakdown and issues you could have had, but God blocked. Yeah, when you could have lost your job, God didn't allow it, he blocked it. Sometimes we, we often want to talk about what bumped us, uh, but we don't always talk about what God blocked. This is a good time. I don't know about you, but I get happy. I get excited when I start thinking about the stuff that could have taken me out. Yeah, the stuff that could have knocked me down, the stuff that could have took me out of the game. But God was so kind, and he blocked it anyhow. You know what? Do me a big favor. Just scream back in that comment section right now. God blocked it. God blocked it. I just start thinking about the stuff he blocked because... I realized that God didn't have to be this good to me. He didn't have to be that good to you because the truth is there's some stuff that we brought ourselves into uh, and, and the stuff should have taken us out, but God says, no, I'm gonna block it. Uh, they don't even realize their future and they don't even realize what I have in store for them. And so I'm gonna block this. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna block it because of what I'm about to do next. Oh, uh, you ought to get excited for what God's about to do next. You might not like what's happening now, but I wish about three of y'all would just comment on that comment section right now that God's about to do something big for me next. 
next. I'm next. I'm in line. I'm, I feel like God's about to do something big for you. I just speak that over your life. You ought to throw your hands up right where you are, that, that God's about to do something for you in this season. Uh, we don't even have to wait to get out of this season of crazy corona. I'm just believing, declaring, prophesying over your life that God's going to bless you in the midst of this crazy corona crisis, that you're going to come out better. Somebody holler back, I will be better. And know what? Somebody already feel like, I am better. I am better. Yes, I am. Uh, yes, you are. You are better. So sometimes, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's, it's, it's the stuff that bumps us that we pay a lot of attention to, but what we don't always take the time to acknowledge and to thank God for is the stuff that he blocked, <laughs> yeah, the stuff that he prevented, the stuff that he could have allowed to happen but didn't happen. And here it is that God allowed this to happen, that God says, I'm coming through in Egypt. Here it is, if I were to bridge the gap to modernity, that God is allowing corona I don't know, maybe, maybe, I just believe maybe God is pushing us all to stay in the house. Some of us have been so busy and doing so many other things that we haven't taken the time to stay in the house. Because you can be at home, but not in the house. Yeah, yeah, you can be around, but not in the house. Yeah, you can be so busy on your job, doing so many things for so many other people, but not in the house. Now, now that we have to stay in the house, people are, are now having to, to spend time with their babies, have, are now having to spend time with their spouses, are having to spend time with yourself. Man, think about that. Uh, you now, uh, most importantly, what you should be doing is spending some time with God. I mean, this is a great time uh, and as we're staying in the house uh, to understand him more. So God says, God says, I'm coming through. The Odyssey, trying to figure out this whole thing. Why does God permit some things? I'm not going to sit here and say that, that, that nothing bad won't happen to you. Yeah, that's not fair to you. Uh, it's not fair to sit here and say uh, that nothing will come nigh your dwelling. Uh, the text does say that. The text says, uh, at Psalm 91, you know, I, I, I do believe that there's a lot that won't come near you yet. Uh, but time and chance happens to us all. Uh, and, and there's a lot of stuff, a lot of things that God has blocked and will block. I believe that most stuff that could come against you, God has and he will block it. Um, but it's not fair to suggest that nothing will come nigh you. Yeah, it's not fair to even suggest that uh, no believer is going to catch corona. I, I, I believe God to cover his people. I believe God uh, to cover all of you that's watching online. I'm praying for you. I'm asking for his covering. Um, but I won't sit here and say that nobody will get touched by this. Uh, that's not fair to you. Uh, and, and, and so I won't, I won't back myself in that kind of theological box. Uh, but what I will say that most stuff God is going to block. Uh, I believe that the blood of Jesus works. Oh, my God. Speaking of the blood, look, look at what happens. Something interesting happens in this text. Uh, God says to them that, that although some stuff happened, look what he said. He says something. Uh, as, if you drop down a little bit further with me, he says over in, in verse 13, look at this. He says, Exodus 12 and 13, the message Bible. The blood will serve as a sign on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, <laughs> I will pass over you. No disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Oh, what, but, what, but the blood will serve as a sign on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. God says, I'm coming through. I'm going to strike them. I'm coming down. I'm coming down the street. I'm, I'm coming down. And, 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 and he says, the only thing that's going to cause me to deviate from me coming through and not touching your house is when I come through and I see the blood on your doorpost. That's going to cause me to pass over. Hmm, this is good. But the key thing, as I dealt with this Sunday, I got to see the blood and you must remain in the house. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to see the blood. And so God says, uh, the blood, you know, it's not, I don't, I don't like to just, uh, as my pastor, like I say, throw a homiletical stone at the blood and don't deal with it. Uh, I, we don't deal with it as Easter come up, but I promise you, uh, there's nothing like the power of the blood of Jesus. Uh, uh, two of y'all, three of y'all, 10 of y'all right now should be responding. It, it was nothing but the blood that saved you, that kept you, that kept me. Uh, he says, when I see the blood, I'm passing over. Can I suggest to you on this beautiful Wednesday, virtual Wednesday, 
that that is the blood of Jesus uh, that that has blocked the stuff that 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 could have come against you. It's the blood of Jesus that washed away your sins. It's the blood of Jesus uh, that healed your body. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood still works. Uh, God was at a point. He says, "Listen, I I can't. Uh, I, I appreciate the sacrificial lambs. I appreciate all that stuff, but." But, but in order for me to redeem mankind to myself is I have to bring myself. And, God, and Jesus says, God says, I have to present myself in the form of a man and I have to, and I have to die so that man can live. Uh, because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So God says the blood has to be shed and he has to have an unblemished land. Jesus Christ had to die for you and me. It is, it was the blood. Uh, and he says, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over and, 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 and it's nothing but the blood. I, I want to just walk, walk through this just real quick, expositorily real quick, because Hebrews, the 10th chapter, fourth verse, walk with me real quick. Uh, I'm almost gone. Uh, look what it says. Hebrews 10 chapter, fourth verse, four through six, it says, uh, the NLT says, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Yeah, that's good. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other, for, or other offerings for sin. Look at Hebrews 10, 10 and 9 through 10. It goes on further. NLT says, then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant. That's good. In order to put the second in effect for God's will was for, for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. And look at Hebrews 7 and 27. Look at this. NLT says, unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. Yeah. They did not, they did this for their own sins first and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus, oh, that's good, did this once for all. You saw that y'all start getting excited right now. Once for all. Yeah. He when he offered himself as a sacrifice for other people's sin. I, I I'm just glad. I'm just glad. I don't know about you. Uh, that that I can go to Jesus Christ for myself. I'm glad that I don't need somebody to mediate for me. I'm glad that that I appreciate all my, my other people that, that worship the way that they do, but I'm glad that I get to go to Christ for myself, that I can come to Jesus just like I am. Come here, somebody, that I can confess my sins to him, that I can I can talk to him and that he hears me and that I can come to Jesus. And I don't need somebody to come in between because he died once and for all. And because of what he did on Calvary over 2000 years ago, how he shed the blood for you and me. I don't have to I don't have to worry about somebody else going to him for me. I can go for myself. Uh, this is good. Uh, I thank God for the blood. Uh, look at that B clause again of, 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 of Exodus 12 and 13. The message Bible says, when I see the blood, look what he says, I will pass over you. No disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. He says, no disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. When I see the blood, that's good. He says, I will pass over you. No disaster yeah, will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. I'm sorry, I got this far, and I didn't even give you my subject. Uh, the subject for the day is, my house is covered. <laughs> it's on the screen, my house is covered. Uh, I'm going, y'all. I'm going. I'm, I'm so glad y'all tuned in and had, came to our virtual campus today, came to worship with us today. Uh, but I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm glad my house is covered. Uh, somebody ought to get excited with me and scream back at that screen right now. Holler back, type in the comment section, my house is covered. Because here it is, here's the thing. Uh, I hear somebody said, I might not have the biggest house, but at least my house is covered. Yeah, I might not live in the best neighborhood, but at least my house is covered. I, I might not even have the best furniture. I might not have the best appliances. Uh, my, my kitchen might not be redone yet, but at least my house is covered. Uh, I might not have all the things I want inside my house, but at least my house is covered. And when your house is covered, I'm telling you, come here, whatever's going on on the outside, you ain't got to trip and worry about it because when the stuff comes against you, this is good, you don't have to worry because your house is covered. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything because I know my house is covered.
covered. And I, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's good uh, to be covered because here's the thing. Uh, some people are looking for man to cover them. They're looking for mankind to come up with solutions. But my trust is in Jesus Christ and nobody else. My trust is in him. Here's what I love. Uh, there are some things that, that can cover you that's good. Yeah, they, there's, some, there's some insurance policies that can cover you. Yeah, they, they can cover your house, your car. Uh, they can cover your, they can give you life insurance. Uh, but with the coverage I'm talking about, uh, it can't cover you. There's, there, there's, some, there's some home securities that can cover you. Yeah, ADT, you can have brinks. Uh, it covers your, your physical house. That's good. Uh, but, but what I'm talking about uh, is more than your physical, physical house. Yeah, insurance can cover you. Uh, State Farm can cover you. All State, Progressive, they all can cover you. Uh, but the insurance that I'm talking about, uh, the, the, the coverage that I'm talking about is the blood of Jesus. Uh, all that other stuff is good, and there's a place for it. Uh, but the coverage I'm talking about, the policy never ends. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to worry about renewing it because he did it once and for all. And it goes with me anywhere in the world. Uh, and no matter what I'm going through, the blood still works. I wish somebody would comment right now. I'm getting happy. I want to I wanna get up and start running around this place. The blood still works. Uh, the blood still works in season and out of season. It still works when stuff is happening to me and I don't like it. I don't understand it. I just go ahead and plead the blood. You ought to decide today that you're going to go all through your house, over your children and, and, and around your house and just plead the blood. I don't care what crazy Corona is doing. Uh, you ought to decide I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm going to lift him up higher than Corona. I'm going to let everybody else talk about how bad Corona is. But if Jesus be lifted up, he says, As I be lifted up, I'll draw. Oh, man, you ought to lift his name up. Uh, I feel like preaching already because there's nothing like the blood of Jesus. Uh, I appreciate those other insurances. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, but I'm talking about the blessed assurance. That is Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. Did I already tell you? My house is covered. Uh, and you ought to feel good about that. Uh, and I just want to holler at you real quick. Uh, maybe, maybe you're at a place right now. Maybe you're at a place right now where uh, you're just struggling with some stuff. You hear everything that's going on in the news. You, 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 you're watching all the stuff that's happening and, and it's concerning you. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe you've lost your job. Yeah. Maybe you're at a place where um, you're unemployed right now. I'm glad you tuned in. It's not happenstance or chance. It's not coincidence that you logged in right now uh, for a time such as now because uh, it's, 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 it's purposeful. Yeah. yeah, It's not serendipity. It's, it's, it's purposeful that you have logged in right now that I'm talking to you, that we're connected. Maybe you weren't coming into the physical church yet, but God destined a, an, or a sign that we would connect right here on social media. I want to just pray with you for you. And I want you to know that, that your house is covered. If you don't know this, Jesus Christ, I'm talking about it. If you want this coverage uh, that, that, that keeps you, it's better, than, it's better than gap insurance. It's better than the car insurance. It's better than house insurance. It's better than unemployment insurance. It's better than all of that. Uh, it's a place for all of those things. But this blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ is what I'm talking about. That's what I offer you now. Uh, if you don't know this Jesus and you said, I want to know him and, and I'm, I'm ready to, I want to join Kingdom Life. I want to be a part of something great like this. Do me a favor right now. Get your phone out. If it's already in your hand, if whatever you're using, I want you to text right now, Kingdom Life JXN, it's on the screen, to 80123. Again, that's Kingdom Life JXN, one word, to 80123. I want you to text that right now. I want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. Uh, you ready to join? You ready to get saved? Listen, now is a good time. We're, we're, we're in some unprecedented times, uncharted waters. Who knows what tomorrow holds? Uh, but now is a great time, a great time right now for you to come to Jesus, to, to get yourself together, to come to him, because it's absolutely, positively no one like Jesus. Uh, do me a favor right now. Text that. Before you log off, before you log off, do me a big favor. I appreciate you logging in. But do me a favor right now. Uh, I want you to give a seed. Sow a seed right now. I want you to be a blessing. Uh, we, we're so glad to be able to bring this broadcast to you. I want to keep bringing it to you. Uh, and so uh, do us a favor. Sow a seed right now. None of us want to eat and run. It's never good to eat and run. Uh, do me a favor right now. Sow a seed. It, maybe you're here for the first time. Awesome. Uh, maybe you're here and, and you're struggling and you, don't, and you don't know how you're going to even feed your family. Don't worry about it. You just keep logging on getting the word. Uh, but do me a favor, everybody listening right now, do me a favor. I want you to stretch right now. 
Uh, stretch for tonight on this beautiful Wednesday night. Stretch for a $20 seed and, and sow a seed tonight. Be a blessing to the ministry. We're, we're, the church is in, uh, in uncharted waters right now. This is a time in our modern history that we haven't seen. And so I'm trusting all of you, uh, Kingdom Life family, uh, near and far, that you're going to sow and be a blessing to the ministry. Hey, I want you to join us this Sunday. It's going to be absolutely bananas. Oh, my goodness. We got a, we got a super intimate setting for you coming back at you. Uh, it's going to be a great word. We have we, we are adjusting because of the times that we're in, but I promise you it's going to bless you extremely well. Uh, make sure you tune in. Tell a friend. Share this share this uh, this this stream. Share this word. Um, but invite everybody you know uh, to the stream this Sunday. You guys overwhelmed us. We had just a, a crazy turnout online at church on our virtual campus. Come back and invite somebody. I push you to invite five people to church with you this Sunday to virtual campus. It's going to be bananas. I'm telling you, we got an amazing work plan for you. I'm excited. I love you. I'm excited for you. When we open a new building uh, and we end the year uh, in person, when all this stuff is lifted, I want to see you. I want to see you. Mark your calendars uh, because when, when they lift it up, I want you, you and your family here because we're going to party. We're going to celebrate Jesus. It's going to be crazy. I love you, family. On behalf of uh, Lady Parker and I, I love you. Uh, we are so glad uh, that you logged in with us. Thank you, Kingdom Life, for your faithfulness. I'm praying for you. Uh, may God bless you. May God enrich you. And may he cover you no matter what you need. May the Lord be with you. And I pray, now that you've logged in, that you have left and you will continue to leave better. God bless you. I'll see you this Sunday, 10 o'clock. It's going to be crazy. Talk to you soon. God bless you.